We're five vertically mortal players with over 40,000 matches of experience and today we're going to teach you some game-changing tricks that will help you to reach mythical mortal as well. Let's cut the chase and begin with number one. Monkey trick. Did you know that Claude can use an infinite regen spell to regain some of his lost HP every 10 seconds? Mastering this trick is quite simple. Just use his BMI before recalling back to the base. And the next thing you need to do requires some precise timing. After regenerating one tick of HP, you have to switch the position with Dexter right away as the time gap between the base healing and his mirror image cooldown is pretty short. A lot of people underestimate this or are simply not even aware of this feature. Claude is criminally weak in the early game and he can't even make a fair trade before getting his main core items. Getting poked by the counterpart is his daily bread, especially when facing the early game monsters like Brody and Melissa. Some players work on his weaknesses by using the basic common emblem, which also helps. And others even go for region items, which is kind of pointless as you need even longer to get your core items. So mastering this mechanic will help you to survive the first five hellish minutes of the game because you can always recall and regain your lost HP every single time before the next minion wave arrives. Number 2. Mr. OP guy who we make even more OP because why not lol. All out also have a few tricks behind his sleeve. And we will expose them so you have another reason to ban him. One trick comes from his ultimate final slash. Ordinary people might think his ultimate is mainly used for completing his combo or executing low HP enemies. But you can actually do much more than that. For example, it can be used to initiate a teamfight or defensive maneuver to save your allies. First, his ultimate has a huge AoE and strong CC effect. This spear swing will push your enemies to the end of its cursor. And if you're aiming it correctly, you can even squeeze the enemy's nuts through a wall. Just be mindful about the direction of his swing though. He always swept from the left to the right. So the best way to pick the enemies off guard is by taking the right position before the fight. For example, if you're going for an offensive maneuver, take the top position to drag your enemies towards your allies. For a defensive use though, position yourself at the bottom to push the enemies away. By learning this basic, you can always drag the enemies to the point of your choice. And even create opportunities for a comeback by swiping them inside of your turret. You also don't need to worry about messing up his engage. Just take a step back and retreat for a while because his ultimate has a very low cooldown. So you don't really need to save it. I also have some super exciting news for you today. I'm partnering with Aptoid so you can get up to 20% more diamonds using my promotion code MLGUIDE. I show you how it works. You reinstall Mobile Legends by downloading the APK using the first link in the description or the pinned comment. Don't de-install Mobile Legends before installing it again or you will have to download all resources again. Just install it over your existing game and everything will be the same as it was before. Then you click on the second link and install the AppCoins app. This you need so you can get the bonus from your diamond purchases. Once you've installed it, open the app, go to settings and click on promotion. And enter my code MLGUIDE in capital letters. It's case sensitive so you have to write all letters in capital letters or it won't work. And that's pretty much it. Now if you buy some diamonds, the app coins wallet is opening once you choose the diamond package you want to buy. And once you completed the process, you get app coin credits which you can use to get even more diamonds for free. As I still have $1.27 worth of app coins, I can just get 55 diamonds for free. It is really simple and you can get thousands of free diamonds for just 2 minutes work. Plus, you really support ML Guide with it as we can keep creating the most helpful guides for you for free. Thank you for your support. Number 3. The Isekai Express. This one is going to be short. Since the battle adjustments on Johnson's ultimate, his ultimate cooldown will only start Boom. after he crashed. No matter how many times you drive in circles around the map to buy some time, the result will stay the Boom. same. So the next time you want to send someone into a trashy isekai world, instead of recalling back Let's to the this. base before driving, you better stay hidden inside Boom. of a bush close to the lane you wanna gang. This way the enemies will have a much shorter reaction time and are unable to dodge your ultimate. Boom. 
This trick is especially effective in epic to early mythic rank as players have less map awareness there. And since we talked about Johnson already, we can't continue without talking about his girlfriend. Number 4. The Death Metal Princess in our latest patch note video, Odette got her ability back to make jumps while singing her death metal music. But does this make her OP now? One thing many players don't understand about Mobile Legends is that every hero can be OP. But many of them need the right scenario to unleash their fullest potential. This is basically what we're trying to teach in our tier list videos. For example, Odette is a very situational mage. When ranking up, you can always see what your enemies are using in the draft phase. So the easy trick to win with Odette much more often is always picking her last. You do not want to pick her if the enemies have strong CC units like this cow what I do? or heroes who can cancel your ultimate. If the enemy only have stuns or even just low effects though, you can go for her without any worry. She is surprisingly sturdy as a mage and even as a roamer. Yes, I said it, but we will talk about roamer that another time. This counts by the way for so many other heroes as well who can be very very strong, but only in certain situations. An Alofit can dominate the enemy team without any problem, but only as long as they don't have a ton of stun effects to stop him. Next up, we have one of the worst counters for a dead. Number 5. The Stomping Cow, Minotaur. Even though he's kind of forgotten by the massive, Minotaur is arguably one of the best tanks for turret diving and initiating a team fight. Just make sure you keep his combo in mind when playing this mad ball. Casting your second skill before battle will prep your allies and increase their attack power. Engaging with your first skill provides a strong knockup with a huge AoE, which makes it super easy for him to cancel many skills like Claude's and Odette's ultimate. And when you combine this with his flicker combo, you will have a huge surprise effect. Now chain it with his ultimate and you will get an AoE monster capable of executing multiple airborns. After using your ultimate, his skills will be enhanced and the cooldown will be resetted. So be generous with your stomp by knocking up your enemies one more time. Just make sure to practice this so you can time it right. Number 6. Slime Guy Gloom might be a tank with strong survivability as he can easily regen back a chunk of his lost HP by just using a single ultimate. But the main reason why this pile of gank is so popular is his flanking ability. He can latch into the enemy's main damage dealers and put a lot of pressure on them in a team fight. So instead of using his split split right away and start running around like a headless chicken while trying to catch the running enemies, make sure to pile up your stick stick passer first before diving in. Because then you will have a much easier time to mount your enemies. The trick is by throwing his slam slam on the target, then use flicker right away to cut them off guard, then use his 1-2 combo to reach the maximum stacks right away. Using this flanking method, you will never have to endure watching the Bollywood police chase drummer again. This combo will guarantee him a full pass up on his target right away, and you can start riding the mother. With the recent battlefield adjustments, Heart's Claws has been combined with Scarlet Thunder. On paper, the attributes got a huge improvement after the fusion. With the extra critical chance, a lot of heroes with critical builds will now have a much better time to compete in the current meta. But there is also one popular hero that got heavily nerfed by this update, Beatrice. Beatrix has been one of the strongest marksmen that used Heart's Claws, but if you take a look at her passive, every critical chance will be converted into physical damage. This means the current Heart's Claws only gives her plus 50 physical attack and plus 20% attack speed. Beatrix simply can't crit, therefore its frenzy passive will never trigger. So ultimately, this item became useless AF for her. Not only did the previous adjustment took the precious lifesteal away, 
away from her ultimate, she now can't even benefit from one of her core items anymore. If you're a Beatrix enjoyer, you should take this item out of your build ASAP and replace it with another one. For example, Demon Hunter Sword to counter tanks, Wind of Nature to counter physical damage, or Rose Gold Meteor to survive some magic burst damage. The bottom line is, always check out the patch notes as this can greatly affect your hero or build. And make sure to watch our patch notes video that drops after a day or two where we analyze these changes. Self-advertisement done, check. Number 8. Mr. Hook. If your team is losing and you're in a bad position, you're usually stuck in the base and you can only hope that your enemies are making a mistake so you can make a comeback. If you're losing while playing as the tank in solo queue though, you better start crying right away as there is no way that you can change the outcome of the match in any way. Or is there? Our hooky boy is not only one of the best roamers in general, you can also make pretty awesome comebacks with him by just doing one simple trick. Hooking the bushes away. All great Franco players will tell me now this is no news for them, but since so many players play Franco only when they are forced to roam, I need to address this. No, you don't need to hook only visible enemies. You can just launch your hook into a suspicious bush okay. and catch an unexpected enemy off guard. This creates the numbers advantage as the hooked enemies is dead 95% of the time. Which means you can create a comeback situation on your own when hooking enemies into your base using the flicker trick. Also, any enemy who got destroyed like this will never hide in any bush near you again and just run for their lives whenever they see you. I know what I'm talking about because I met great Franco players and I was the one avoiding bushes as this MF hooked me out of it all the time. Number 8.5 Teleporting versus Walking. Since we're already using Franco, let's talk about how to roam using this handsome daddy. Franco can run actually really fast despite his chubby body. Pair him with swift food and dominant ice cream and his passive will help him to fly around the map in a short time. The scenario is simple. You want to help your team on the other side of the map. Are you recalling now or just run there? A hero who has so much movement speed bonus is surely faster than the guy who is recalling, right? Well, it turns out they are both tied just with the change that the one who is recalling actually regains his lost HP and mana. So unless you're using someone like Ling and Fanny who has extreme speed skills, recalling is almost always better if you want to reach the other side of the map. Rotating has another advantage though. While rotating, you're giving vision to your team, which is often vital for the side laners. So there's no clear winner as you have to decide what is more important for you right now. Number 9. The Magical Spear with Physical Attributes. What is this item is one of the most <laughs> underrated ones in the game. Although it works both with the Critical and the Trinity build. People often think Sea Halberd is just a less useful anti-heal item because its ability to reduce the healing overlaps with your tank's dominance ice cream. But they forget about the new second passive of this item. Punish! It increases your damage by 8% against enemies with higher extra HP. Let's talk about the trigger condition first. Extra HP is different from max HP. As it only considers all HP you get from emblems, talents, equipment and hero skills. It doesn't matter if you have higher max HP than your enemies. It will always trigger when the enemy has more extra HP than you. You might complain, but Nico, this part of us hard to trigger because your enemies have to buy defensive items first. Uh, well, not really. Since Sea Halberd is best used by DPS heroes, you don't really need to buy defensive items unless it's necessary. And there are many items that give a hero extra HP that are not defensive items. So more often than not, you will always trigger the passive, especially in the late game. So saying this item only works against tanks is a huge understatement. Next, we need to talk about the 8% damage increase. If you compare it to the new talents, Master Assassin will only give you 4% damage increase and you need to separate your enemies from their allies to trigger its effect. 
Focusing Mars also only gives you 6%, which is very close, but it's limited to a single target and it has a cooldown. So whenever you meet heroes with a healing effect, start considering to add Kadita Spare into your arsenal for more than just anti-heal effects. Number 10. The Axe of Doom. After getting so many nerfs since it released, this item gradually lost its popularity even amongst the fighters. And sadly, there's no way for Squishy Marksman to use it, because the bonus effect would be halved. Oh wait, is it actually possible? There are actually some marksmen that can abuse this item. But you need to pay close attention to the hero's role. Roger is a fighter marksman and Yi Sun Jin is an assassin marksman. Their main role is not a marksman, so they can fully benefit from the war axe attack and penetration bonus. The same applies for Wind of Nature as well though. Roger and Yi Sun Jin can only enjoy half of the duration of wind chat because the main role is not a marksman. Sadly, not every marksman with a double role can benefit from more acts. For example, Leslie has the marksman assassin type, so because her first role is a marksman before the assassin role, and her passive converts every flat physical penetration into 0.5% critical damage, she only gets 8 penetration at full stacks, which will be converted into 4% critical damage. Buying War X is just a waste of gold in an item slot for her, so make sure when your hero has a double roll that the items you use are actually working for them. But I got another thing that will surely not become a waste. Watching this video where we will show you 3 emblem combos that are absolutely broken. I mean, you can easily increase your win rate by 5 or even 10% by just using the right emblem. Also, a huge shout out to our MLG family members, especially the Mythical Glory members like Uvu and Duelist. See you over there!